Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. Topping our world lead today, the ongoing efforts to find the 10 missing U.S. sailors after the USS John S. McCain and an oil tanker collided near Singapore. Tragically, bodies of some of those sailors have been found. Moments ago, President Trump tweeted, quote, we pray for our fallen heroes who died while serving our country in the U.S. Navy aboard the USS John S. McCain and their families. Let's bring in CNN's Matt Rivers, who joins us from Singapore. Matt, what, what's the latest in this search? Oh, well, this search is still technically being called a search and rescue, and when operations resume, uh, when the sun rises here in Singapore uh, in just a couple hours, the Navy has said they're hopeful they might find some survivors, but the reality is that over the last 24 hours, Jake, this really has been more of a recovery operation, given what you just said. Uh, it was the commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet that confirmed to reporters uh, on Tuesday evening here in Singapore that divers for the U.S. Navy had made their way into damaged sections of the hull of the USS John S. McCain and found some of the remains of those missing uh, sailors, 10 missing U.S. sailors. Now, the Navy has not said how many sailors they have recovered at this point. Also, the Malaysian Navy has been helping in this effort since right in the very beginning, and they found the body uh, in waters near where this incident took place, that body in the process of being transferred back to the U.S. So, Jake, at this point, they're still very active. The priority is still trying to find anyone who might be alive. But as you know, as the hours go by, the odds of finding survivors get a lot slimmer. It's so horrific. Um, a startling question also being raised now, uh, man, about whether a cyber attack could have played a, a role here. Yeah, that question was posed to the commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, and like other top U.S. Navy officials, he took the question and said they have no evidence of that at all at this point, no evidence of outside activity, any nefarious activity from other actors. Uh, and so at this point, he says there is no evidence of that. However, none of the top U.S. Navy officials that have took that question have said they're going to take anything off the table. They want this investigation into what caused this to be wide-ranging, and so they're not going to eliminate any possibilities this early on. All right, Matt Rivers in Singapore for us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Is it the Instagram version of Let Them Eat Cake? The wife of multimillionaire Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin going after a mother of three, but now she is suddenly singing a different tune. Plus, we are just moments away from President Trump's arrival in the border town of Yuma, Arizona, where he will visit a Customs and Border Protection office. All that coming up, back after this. More on our politics lead. You know what President Trump likes to do when he gets attacked? He punches back ten times harder. And he is not the only one in and around the White House who feels that way, apparently. Louise Linton, the sometime actress and third wife of Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, is now facing a backlash after publicly going after an Oregon woman on Instagram. It all started with this post, with Linton touting her high fashion goods worth tens of thousands of dollars while disembarking from a government plane in Kentucky which has the fifth highest poverty rate in the U.S. CNN's Kate Bennett joins me now. Kate, Miss Linton, obviously a very public figure, and she was very publicly in an open Instagram account flaunting her wealth. Is there any sense in the Trump administration that this was handled poorly? Well, there's no word from the White House today uh, about this incident, but we can imagine the optics of the situation certainly didn't look that great for Louise Linton. However, just moments ago, CNN obtained an apology from Ms. Linton given to us by her personal publicist. It reads, I apologize for my post on social media yesterday as well as my response. It was inappropriate and highly insensitive. Still, both the post and the response quickly became the viral story of the day. In a bold example of insta-bragging, Louise Linton, the glamorous actress and newlywed wife of Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, last night posted a picture of herself and her husband on her Instagram account, deplaning a government aircraft after a day trip to Kentucky on official business. Dressed all in white and toting an Hermes purse and silk scarf, Linton proceeded to tag her outfit with the designers, including Tom Ford and Valentino. She also tagged her husband. That post, which is now deleted, has caused a firestorm. A woman named Jennifer Miller commented on Linton's post, saying, quote, glad we could pay for your little getaway, hashtag deplorable. To which Linton shot back a barrage of condescending comments, asking Miller if she paid as much in taxes as she and Mnuchin do, saying in part, quote, 
pretty sure the amount we sacrifice per year is a lot more than you'd be willing to sacrifice if the choice was yours. Linton, in a post littered with kissy face emojis, wouldn't back down, suggesting Miller, a mother of three from Oregon, was, quote, adorably out of touch, and telling her to, quote, go chill out and watch the new Game of Thrones. Jennifer Miller telling CNN today. It was deplorable what she wrote in the first place, and then her response was even worse. Always supported. This isn't the first time Linton has faced criticism. Last year, her self published memoir about the time she spent volunteering in Zambia was blasted by critics for being filled with inaccuracies and racial insensitivities. She later pulled the book from Amazon and apologized. Linton has flaunted her wealthy lifestyle in interviews before pointing to her childhood days at the family's enormous castle in Scotland. I don't feel very well, Evie. Or living the Hollywood high life, where she acted and produced movies, and where she met her now husband in 2013. Congratulations to you, to Louise.